It is back again, the Too Tall Tom here. We are about to go into our wetlands ecosystem. Um, so, before we get started with our wetlands and get into our, our hike to get there, um, what I'd like you to do is, if you've seen the other two videos or if you haven't gotten there yet even, think about what you think the wetlands are and what they might have there, what kind of plants, maybe what kind of animals, and how it's different than the forest or the pond because they're not all the same and they all have different aspects and characteristics of each other um, that make them unique and even unique to just YMCA Camp Slope or, or Connecticut or the New England even. So think about what makes the wetlands unique. All right, we're getting closer. Um, on our travels to the wetlands, before we get there, as you might even hear in the background, you hear something um, kind of rushing downhill. And, but here's my question before we get to that, is how do you think the wetlands form? I'll give you a, I'll give you a quick hint. So the wetlands we have here at YMCA Camp Sloper are seasonal wetlands, which means that they're only really wetlands for part of the year, only during a couple seasons. Now, one of the best seasons is in the spring, right now, which is great. So we'll be able to see the wetlands kind of in their, their pre-life, they're getting there early in the growth period, and you're gonna see a lot of stuff in the wetlands. Now, from getting back to my question is, how do these wetlands form? If they're seasonal, and they're only part of the year, and they go away for part of the year, how do they come back? Well, let me get into that really, really quick for you. Think about this, it's winter time, it's snowing, and but now it's more of that March, April, it's getting a little warmer, springtime is, snow starts to melt, lots of rain's coming down, it starts at the top of the mountain, way over there, right over where our pond is, we're actually lower than the pond right now. All that rain comes rushing down into the pond, the pond fills up a little bit, and overflows a little bit, and it starts to rush down this stream right here. So what you can see is all of this water starts rushing down from the mountaintop all the way into the pond, overflows over the spillway, and flows right down past you all the way to our wetlands, which is where we will be heading next. So follow me. to the wetlands right now. Before we get anywhere closer, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to stop right now. I'm gonna get out of the frame and I want you to just kind of look around. We're getting really close to the wetlands. We're almost inside the wetlands right now. Take a moment, check out where we are and see if you see anything different compared to what we saw in the forest or near the pond. So go ahead, take a moment, check out what you see right here. unique about the wetlands so a couple things that I can point out for you that you probably already saw the first one is if I compare this ecosystem where we are right now to the forest with Nick there are a lot more trees and bushes and the smaller things it might be a little harder to weave my way through all of this the second thing that you may have noticed was on the ground right here I'm standing on it right now I've got a lot of moss on the ground and why do we have moss everywhere? What does moss need? It needs a ton of water, which is why you're gonna see a lot of it on the ground near the wetlands. Right next to the moss that you didn't see in the forest, we were walking all over the forest, I didn't trip over anything once. I was almost tripping over all these roots right here. Now why do you think all the roots are on top of the, the land versus the big trees where they're all underground? That's because there is so much water here in the wetlands that the trees don't really have to work that hard. They're kind of lazy, in fact. And they can have their roots spread out all over the top of the land 
so that they, they don't have to dig down deep to get the water. Also, second reason why their roots are everywhere is because there's so many trees, there's so many plants, they're all fighting for that water too. So they have to make their roots go pretty much everywhere for them to get all the nutrients they need. Follow me, let's get into the, the heart of the wetlands. If you didn't get nauseous walking around really fast, my legs are kind of hurting a little bit from that speed walk. But did you notice anything as we were walking into the wetlands? Probably one of the biggest things that you saw were all these cabbages down here. These things are huge. They weren't even here like a week ago. But that's because we get a little bit warmer weather and there's tons of water everywhere for these guys to start growing. Now, even if you look around to the sides over here and over here as well, this is way different than the forest where Nick was and super different from where Justin was at the pond. There is so much vegetation and trees and plants and water that if I took a step off of this boardwalk, I'd probably sink in somewhere. I'd be stepping in a lot of mud, a lot of water, and I'm a big person. I'm like my own kind of bear-sized person. If I tried to walk through these woods right here, I'm not getting anywhere. So what you might not see compared to the forest are those larger animals. So if you don't have larger animals, what might be here? This is a wonderful place for small creatures, the smaller birds, a lot of small amphibians to start their lives because there aren't a lot of predators. They can grow up here really easily. There's lots of places to hide. There's tons of water and food everywhere for these guys. So what they do is a lot of creatures and animals start their lives in the wetlands and then travel upstream towards the pond where there's even more food, there's bigger food. And if they're even lucky enough, they might go over into the forest and find things there as well. So the wetlands is kind of a place of, of the start of life. It's a place of growth, which is really cool. All right, now it's time for a little bit of extra fun in this workshop that we're doing for the wetlands, but I'm gonna connect it to Nick's forest experiment. Now, one, at one point in his video, he had all this soil in his hands, and he said it was really crumbly, it was dry, and it just kind of fell out of his hands. Now, we're in the wetlands, and I wanna make sure I keep my hands clean, so I'm not gonna to touch anything, but I can do a fun little experiment, and I'm gonna see if I can move Justin without touching him. Watch this. Don't try this at home anywhere besides here without an adult supervision because you never know. I'll explain why in a second. I'm gonna get off the boardwalk just about a foot and a half and I'll show you what I can do. Ready? So I'm here. It's super squishy, okay? Super squishy, but it's kind of like a trampoline. And as I jump, I can move the whole boardwalk, I'm moving the land around me, I'm making the water move over here, and all the sticks and the trees are moving as well, which is super fun, but to be completely honest with you, is a little scary because there is actually a natural wonder here. Just to my right, your left, we've got one of our seven natural wonders, which is our sinkhole. And if you don't know what a sinkhole is, take a second, talk to a friend, and ask them, what is a sinkhole? How does it form? Well, let's come over and see the sinkhole and show you how this all happens. So right here, I'm gonna go a little brave right now. I'm gonna try to get over here. So right here, right in front of me, next to these sticks in the ground, this is our sinkhole, which is really super cool because this wasn't here a long time ago. The only reason why we found this was by accident. We were walking around building this boardwalk so people and students like you can enjoy the wetlands. And while we were doing it, somebody's foot fell through the earth and pushed all the earth down and made this giant hole. 
Now, it wasn't just a really big person, like I didn't just jump on the ground and I fell through. It actually had a little bit of help too. Naturally, underneath the land, all that water that we have here in the wetlands starts to break down and break away at the soil and make it really soggy and muddy. And that's when you get that squishy feeling and everything, it starts to break away. And when you have enough pressure on top, snow and trees and rocks and people maybe, you can push right through. And that's how we got this sinkhole. Now, one really cool thing we like to share with everybody, and I'm gonna let you guys do this right now, is I'm gonna ask you a quick question and see if you get this right. This sinkhole is pretty dark. You got dark water. How deep do you think this goes? Let's find out right now. Follow along with me. I've got a couple sticks in here. I'm gonna use this big one so you can see it. I have no idea how deep this goes. I gotta test it out. I'll test it with my own body so you guys can measure it out and let you know that. But let's slowly bring this up. Here we go. Got a nice water line on there. We're moving, we're moving, we're moving. Oh, it's bringing some stuff up with it. What is going on? This stick never ends. There we go. All right. So let me put this right next to me for a second and we'll measure this out. So I'm about six feet and four inches tall or 76 inches. This stick right at my chin, let's call it five feet, 10, almost six feet tall. So it's about half of my body or, or the stick is as tall as my body. If you look down where the water line is right about here, this is about half of my body. So I would guess where the stick was, that it's about three, three and a half feet, which is pretty cool. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. I could probably push this stick almost all the way and have it go under, which I'm gonna try right now because I want other people to enjoy this as well. Last thing I'm gonna mention is that this place stinks. There are so many things in here. Do you have any idea what might be in there? As I push this down, and I'm not even pushing that. Look, I'm using one finger. And it keeps going. Push a little harder. Oh man, my hand's gonna get sucked in. There we go. So now that sticks all the way in. Woo wee! Hey. Justin, was hey. that you? It was not too tall, Tom. Oh man, guys, what what is that smell? It was me. Oh Nick, definitely not you. I can actually explain that. For those of you who are thinking, why am I going? Who made that smell? That's because the wetlands is because it's a lot of new growth, but also because we're seasonal, a lot of things actually die here too. So you got a lot of decomposition happening all around me. It's happening inside the sinkhole, it's happening inside that small little pond right there we have, and all the things that are on the ground are starting to decompose and get eaten. And when they decompose, they, they give off a little bit of methane, which really doesn't smell that good, um, and a little bit of gas that makes it smell like really mucky, and like rotten eggs. So that's why I said it kind of smelled. I was bringing up all this muck that's in that, in the sinkhole, that's what smells. But as you can see, I pushed that six foot stick pretty much to about six inches or so that's left of that stick. So I would say we were at three feet where the stick was, but really this thing could probably swallow me whole. So that's a cool little fun fact. Thanks you guys for tuning in. What I'd like you to do right now is I, we talked about a lot and it might be confusing. So if you would like to, please write down a question. I'd love to answer it for you. We can get back to you as soon as we can. But if you have any questions about anything we saw on our walk, about how this forms, about some of the things you might find here, or even about the sinkhole, let us know and we will get the answer back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.